Our Smart Start begins with breaking news this morning. A man found on North Clinton Avenue with life-threatening injuries overnight. Police are currently investigating. Eric Cost is live at the scene with what we know. Eric Hedda, good morning. Good morning. Well, this is just into our newsroom that officers are investigating on scene here again. And a man in his 60s suffering life threatening conditions. Um, but officers aren't specifying what exactly caused those injuries. Here's a look at the scene still going on um, behind me. It's pretty quiet right now. There are patrol cars blocking off. Again, this is North Clinton Ave between Clifford Ave and Scranton Street. They say it should reopen within the next hour or so. Um, we're told this call came in just before 2 a.m. Again, officers say they're unsure what caused the man's injuries at this time, but he is fighting for his life. It's also just been a busy morning for Rochester Police. A lot of calls coming in. We just moved here from a scene on Dewey Ave uh, where there was a reported stabbing there. No suspects in custody for either of these incidents, and we'll be sure to keep you updated as we learn more on everything that's going on right now. A lot of activity in the city, um, but again, we'll keep you posted as this develops. In Rochester, Eric Hedda Cost, News 8. Eric Hedda, thank you for the live update, and again, we'll have updates on that breaking story online at rochesterfirst.com. Also breaking this morning, police investigating an overnight stabbing on Dewey Avenue. Officers say a man in his 30s was stabbed there and is facing life-threatening injuries. That investigation is also ongoing. No suspects are in custody. Well, a fire uh, resulting in substantial damage to a house on Harvest Street in Rochester. Fire officials say crews quickly extinguished that fire, but the damage to the second floor of both apartments made it unlivable. No one was injured. The cause of that fire is under investigation. Meanwhile, a teenage girl seriously injured after being hit by a car last night in Irondequoit. A reporter there says it happened just after 8 o'clock when two teenagers were attempting to cross Seneca Avenue. Uh, it was learned that two teenage girls were walking westbound on Rogers Parkway as they were crossing over Seneca Avenue here. A vehicle uh, headed southbound struck one of the females. Um, that female was transported to Strong Memorial Hospital with uh, serious injuries. While no word on injuries to the other teenager or the driver of that car, Seneca Avenue reopened around 1 o'clock this morning. A 20-year-old is in the hospital with life-threatening injuries after a shooting in Rochester. Police say this happened on Lang Street around 945 last night. They blocked off Lang from North Clinton to Remington during the investigation. No suspects are in custody there. Police also investigating a double shooting on Clifford Avenue. This happened around 7.30 last night. Police say two men, ages 43 and 25, were taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Investigators determined both were shot in the same incident. Part of Clifford Avenue was shut down during that investigation. Now, these incidents part of a violent weekend in Rochester. Friday, police found a man dead in a home near Lake Avenue in Phelps. Another man injured in that same incident. Then Saturday, a man was shot on Katy Street. Overnight Sunday, two separate incidents still being investigated. The first one taking place in the area of Harris and Athens Street just after 3 a.m. Officers say a 26-year-old man from Rochester was shot in the upper body. Some 20 minutes later, officers responded to Strong Memorial for the report of a 30-year-old man who'd been shot. Police determined he was shot on Hawley Street. Both of those injuries are deemed non-life threatening. Now, the violence we're seeing here is happening around the state as well. In Syracuse, a shooting Saturday morning killed one person and injured four others. It happened early in the morning in the Armory Square neighborhood. Syracuse police say officers were nearby when they heard those shots fired. Officers were uh, literally about 30 to 40 feet uh, away from the incident. Uh, they responded when they heard uh, gunfire at the location, uh, discovered five individuals that had been shot. And according to police, one person remains in critical condition. Around the country, three mass shootings have communities reeling. One in Pittsburgh, where two teenagers were killed at a party at an Airbnb. Police say the vast majority of those who attended that party were underage. In South Carolina, at least nine people were injured after a shooting at a nightclub about 80 miles west of Charleston. 
In the state's capital Saturday, a shooting at a mall injured 14 others. Columbia police say a 22 year old turned himself in, posted bond, and was placed under house arrest. How, how can you even have a holiday uh, when your child uh, was involved in some, something traumatic like this um, and all the others who were in it, the incident? Um, you know, this is traumatizing to our officers. Well, this comes amid the attack in that New York City subway last week as well. Certainly a violent stretch, a chilly yeah. start to the day. Here locally, James, uh, uh, kids, uh, most kids off from school yeah. this week. Yeah. Uh, lots of moms and dads taking time with the kids as well. I hope but so. if you're heading out and about, you need the checklist. Yeah, certainly. Uh, we're uh, thinking about what we need to wear as uh, April could be just so wild. I'm going to put off winter jacket here. Hopefully you did not uh, put it away because it might be a good morning for it. And yes, the sunglasses as well. We've got bright sun this morning. Let's enjoy it. Uh, I did not check umbrella, but if you're out later this afternoon and this evening, say 7, 8 p.m., yeah, you'll want to pack the umbrella as well as we've got rain showers that uh, do transition over to snow showers. A very large storm system going to bring snow for some across the region. We'll do last look at the eight-day forecast at the end of the show. All right, James, uh, thank you. Uh, checking the roads once again now with our sunrise traffic. And the big issue this morning has been on 590 South, at 490, right at the can of worms. An earlier accident causing a closure of the right lane and some slowing there this morning. No issues downtown in our live view of the Douglas Anthony Bridge. Light volume going over the bridge at this hour. All right, now to the war in Ukraine with no end in sight. Russia's attacks continue there. Some U.S. lawmakers say the U.S. needs to step in and do more. Alexandra Limon joining us from Washington with more on what lawmakers say and why the U.S. has not done more to intervene. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said Ukraine won't give up its fight against Russia in the besieged eastern city of Mariupol. It is very important for us not to allow them to stand our ground. That despite the warning from Russia to the remaining troops there to surrender or die. On CBS Face the Nation, Delaware Senator Chris Coons said the U.S. shouldn't give up either. Mm -hmm. The American people cannot turn away from this tragedy in Ukraine. Senator Coons advocated for more U.S. involvement in Ukraine. I think the history of the 21st century turns on how fiercely mm -hmm. we defend freedom in Ukraine and that Putin will only stop when we stop him. And on Capitol Hill, more than one U.S. senator has said perhaps U.S. troop involvement in Ukraine shouldn't be completely off the table, as Russia shows no signs of backing off its attack on Ukraine. The president, in terms of his decisions as commander in chief uh, need to look clearly uh, at the level of brutality. Russia has already sent a warning to the U.S. to stop sending weapons to Ukraine. U.S. involvement in helping Ukraine has been measured in part because Russia possesses nuclear weapons that some experts fear Putin would use. And Pope Francis addressed those fears in his remarks Easter Sunday. Metteremo fine. Shall we put an end to the human race or shall mankind renounce war? Asked Pope Francis. Another reason the U.S. hasn't sent troops to help defend Ukraine is because that country isn't part of NATO. So far, President Biden has been firm in his decision that the U.S. won't send troops. In Washington, Alexandra Limo. Alexandra, thank you. Earlier this morning, missile strikes were heard in the western Ukraine city of Lviv. Well, today is tax day, the federal deadline for individual tax filing and payments. Those who request an extension will have until October to file their tax return. But if you owe money, pay now or be subject to penalties. Here's what some folks will be talking about at the water cooler this morning for the first time since the pandemic began. Boston Marathon runners will take the course on Patriots Day. 30,000 runners from 122 countries will compete in this year's Boston Marathon. This year marks the 50th anniversary since women began competing. Officially, 12,000 female runners are registered, and we wish them a great race. Nice. Boy, if you're running around these parts, you better bundle up as well, James. Oh, yeah, certainly. Uh, they're pretty chilly in Boston, and we're cold here. Uh, and everybody in the 20s uh, this morning. Uh, so we are wrapping up. Uh, and... Uh, 
We warm up though nicely. We get into the 50s, but then numbers drop tonight. Uh, right around 32, rain showers transition over to snow showers. Yeah, we got flakes flying overnight. Winter weather advisories, Wayne County, Ontario, Yates as well. Uh, so we are uh, preparing for it mentally and as well uh, with work and school. Tomorrow. I'll say, James, uh, thank you. That's it for us here on News 8 at Sunrise. Our next update is coming up in 30 minutes. CBS Mornings is up next. Have a great day.